Hi guys, welcome back to A Day in the Life of a Surgical Technologist working in plastic surgery. I'm sure if you guys are new, so welcome. First thing I like to do once I get to work is just get my scrub out of the way. So we have to do a five minute scrub. I've talked about this before. You do a five minute scrub every single morning when you get into work, whether you work day shift, night shift, whatever. You just have to do a scrub first thing first. So I like to go ahead and do that. So before I do that, I like to just cover my hair and just get everything tucked away and get ready to do that. I take off all of my jewelry, so I take off my Apple Watch, I take off my rings, and the way how I store, I stash my rings for the day is just to basically take off my necklace and put my rings on my necklace and secure them that way. I've seen some people tie them onto their scrub bottoms. I don't like to do that if you work at a hospital and you're going to like take your scrub bottoms off and throw them in a one of those like laundry things. It can get you can like throw your rings away. It's going to be really hard to find it. So I don't like to do that because I will literally forget about my rings. So I just keep them on my necklace. And then I go ahead and grab a scrub um, sponge. And then I just go ahead and do like a hand wash and make sure my hands are wet. And when you're cleaning your fingernails, you want to make sure you clean your fingernails under running water. The temperature, it just matters in what your preference is. So I go ahead and I do that. And I do have a scrubbing video where I go into detail about how to scrub. And so if you want to see that, I will link that in this video, like right on top of the screen. I'll put a card. So I just go ahead and I do that. And I do the 30 second, I do like the count, brush stroke count method that I use. Um, there's different ways to do that. I think I talked about that in my other video, but I will link that so you guys can see it and see how to scrub. But that's what I'm doing here. And then pretty much after that, I'm just going to go ahead and just get dried off. I'm going to wash that off. And it's okay for you to like touch whatever after this. I know some people get confused when I post like my videos on TikTok. They're like, oh, you scrubbed, but then you touch stuff. It's like you can touch things. So if you're new to the surgical tech world, you don't know how the OR works. Everyone does their first scrub of the day and then they go about their daily lives and do other things. Like you have to get your room set up. You have to get stuff set up. Some people, they'll do this at the last minute when they're scrubbing into their case. I don't ever do that. I hate going into a room wet. So I typically just go ahead and do my scrub first and then I'll do Avogard at the end, like right before my case. So then I go to the operating room and I basically just start getting stuff ready. So where I work now is just a small office. We do like local procedures and we do we do like breast recons, like only cosmetic surgery at this place and it's only one operating room which is so nice. I'm the only tech there. I work with about two or three surgeons. Um, there's another surgeon that runs out the practice but it's just us and it's really nice because like I said it's just one operating room so I don't really have to like worry about working different rooms doing different specialties I'm so happy that I specialized so here I am in the room just getting everything ready I'm getting the SCD machine which is the some sequential compression device ready for the patient when the patient comes in the room that's on the bed and we can just attach them to their squeezy booties um, so I go ahead and I get that ready. I basically just use this time to get the room ready at this point. Usually we start really early in the morning at about 7.30, but today case was starting a little bit later. So I had a little bit more time on my hands. So I usually do a lot of this like the day before. Um, I go ahead and I make sure I position the lights. You want to position your lights. Something you want to do as a surgical tech is like position your lights before you scrub because it's easier to just have your lights closer to you and you can just adjust them as necessary versus trying to bring your whole arm around when you are scrubbed in and the surgeon's not happy. So I always go ahead and make sure to check my lights, make sure the bulbs are working because here I turned my lights on and realized that one of the bulbs were out. So we had to go change that. And again, this is a small practice. This is something that I would do. I don't have anyone to call. So you have to learn how to do, as a scrub tech, you are, you learn how to do everything, especially you want, when you are ready to like specialize. This is very important. When you're in a big hospital, you really need to take on everything and like learn how to do everything because when you do decide to specialize or go to smaller practices, you are going to be responsible to do a lot of stuff hands on. But this is simply very, very easy to do to change the light bulbs. I just go ahead, unscrew everything, take the bulb out, change it, go get a new one, swap it out. It's not really that hard. It's just like how changing a light bulb at home, it's really not that difficult. 
So I go ahead and I do that. They have these like little halogen bulbs and I just go ahead and swap that out. And I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like in a second. That's literally that little bulb that's illuminating the entire OR. Well, the surgical site. So I go ahead, do that, and then I just screw it back on and put it back together. And that's really it. It's like super simple. The only thing I didn't know where they were, like the bulbs were, so I had to go ask my nurse. But the whole exchange thing was actually like pretty simple. So then I go ahead, put that back, make sure um, I go ahead and I test the lights to make sure I actually did put it in correctly and it actually works. So I went ahead and did that and it took like a second to come on. I was like scared. I was like, oh my God, I did something wrong. But then eventually it came on. Um, so that was that. But then I realized while adjusting them again, I realized that some of the glass shards from the lamp actually got on the patient's bed so i went ahead and changed that out because you don't want your patient laying down on glass so i went ahead and just changed that really quick and this is also something that i do i typically usually make the patient bed as well um that's something that i do that's something that at the big hospitals like your nurse like depending on where you work when i worked at the big hospital it was like the nurse's job to make the bed but like if you're in the room your nurse is busy you can make the bed like there's no big deal like in the operating room there's no unless it's physically giving the patient medication or whatever like certain nurse specific things you can do just about everything as a surgical tech that is within your scope obviously you're not doing surgery but in terms of like helping help your nurse is what i'm talking about like help your nurse out be a team get things running much more smoothly and you'll be fine Another thing that I do is that I also make sure the OR and the the um, the sterile substerile areas like where we keep our sterile supplies are in normal like ranges for humidity and making sure that the air is circulating well. So I check those like I check the thermostats and make sure that the OR is not like freezing cold, it's in good temperature. And then after that, I go ahead and I take my little morning break right before the patient comes in. I think I usually do this like right before, like right when the patient comes in, because I know the doctor has to go mark them, anesthesia has to see them, they have to do all this stuff. So I typically take that time to go ahead and get some food in my system. And then I go back over to the OR section and I just kind of pull little things that I think the doctor is going to need. Um, this doctor that I work with, he likes using the facelift scissors no matter what we're doing. He likes the facelift scissors. He did not use them this time, but I usually just pull them and have them there. And here's another thing that I do is I go ahead and I turn on the Bovi machine to make sure the Bovi is working. And I go ahead and set it to the surgeon's preference. So like I know the surgeon's preference is 30-30. Usually everyone's about 30-30 depending on what you're doing. But I go ahead and I do that because that's also something that my nurse doesn't have to do. And my nurse is also, again, it's a small practice. My nurse is also the PACU nurse and she's also pre-op. So she's dealing with the patient. So while I'm here, I just do that. So patient was ready. Surgeon was there. I went ahead and started opening my case for the day. So you guys are not going to see me set up for this case because I typically, I typically set up once the patient gets in the room. I know that sounds scary. But honestly, I do not have that much setting up to do ever. So I typically set up once the patient gets in the room because otherwise I set up and then I'm waiting or I'm wasting stuff by breaking in. At smaller practices, we try to really break, we try to like cut down on our waste because they are buying stuff out of their own money. So like it's funded by the surgeon. So we want to make sure we're not wasting stuff so i don't go scrubbing and then break scrub and like use another gown and gloves i make sure that i just go ahead and scrub in once i'm fully ready to go and that's when the patient's in the room so i do that i know it's going to be a minute before you know anesthesia puts them to sleep and all that so it's really not a big deal like i said i don't have a lot of stuff to put together on my table for these small plastic surgery cases like it's really not a big deal So I'm just going ahead and opening up all the things that I have to open. That's literally the size of my instrument tray. 
It has just about everything that the surgeon will need. One thing working at this office has taught me is that all the stuff that I used to open at the hospital, we waste so much stuff at the hospital because we don't use half the stuff that we use at the hospital. Like we open things when it's needed, not because, oh, they may use it. No, we open stuff once it's needed. So once the surgeon asks for it, we open it. Like there's just specific things that I won't open. Like I don't even open sutures because I don't want to open extra sutures that cannot be restarted. Like you can't re-sterilize sutures, right? And you're just wasting that. So I typically don't even open sutures before hand because I don't want to waste them. So that's what my table looks like very very like basic um i did open a few more things after like i realized we were going to do implants actually because i thought it was just a breast augmentation but they are putting me in implants so i went ahead and grabbed a diver and the surgeon said he wanted the lighted retractor so i went ahead and grabbed that as well so and then i just go ahead and i open just a few more things that i was going to need for that case so i opened those things and then i also grabbed a debakey insulated debakey which i didn't open that because he didn't need it and like literally you don't need the baby like that's crazy to me because when i worked at the hospital again like you open like they were using like 10 20 debakeys all the time <laughs> so i'm being dramatic but seriously those surgeons like drop debakeys like they were no going out of stuff when i worked with the plastic teams at the hospital they would drop instruments like crazy um, and then I'm opening a pack of Betadine to put on the field because we usually wash the implants and we wash the incision with Betadine before putting it implants. And then here I am just getting ready. I like to tuck my scrubs and get everything tucked away before I go ahead and scrub into the case. This case wasn't too long. We were literally just doing a little bit of um, just retouch up um and putting in these implants so that's really what we did um it was probably about maybe an hour and a half maybe not even um so that was pretty much like a slow just not too crazy day i've had days where i've got i've gotten three cases and they were like breast recon um breast og and then maybe like fat graft liposuction type thing and it's kind of busy like I remember there was one day that I was there for 11 hours because I had to do like a, two breast augs and then I had a facelift and the facelift went a little bit. So this was my table at the end of the case. Um, again, very limited stuff that it gets open and then I keep my back. I don't really work off my back table throughout the case so it's pretty clean throughout the entire case. Plus when I'm doing implants I like to keep my back table clean for accepting the implants and stuff so that's usually a pretty clean table back there I usually just work off my mayo and then so on the side here I have like laps that I didn't use towels that I didn't use and like I said smaller practice so we do reprocess those items not to use in surgery again but simply to use in our like local procedures like when a patient comes in for like you know Botox or like um we do like a local mole removal or something we'll use it for that but never again in surgery obviously but um just to like keep the cost down and not throwing things away we re-sterilize it and just use it for smaller little procedures that we do around the office and like skincare and things like that and then i just go ahead clean everything up and basically just get everything ready to be cleaned so i'm the person that cleans the instruments um so you learn how to sterilize stuff in school, right? So I had to go back to basics here um, to refresh my memory about how to like re-sterilize instruments and things like that. Um, but it's really not that hard once you get the hang of it. You basically just follow the instructions of how much of the actual, um, this is, what is it called? <laughs> the liquid thing that we use to decontaminate the instruments. Making sure you're using um, the right amount. I soak the instruments for a while. If they're really bloody, I'll soak them for a while with the, um, why can't I figure out the name of this thing that we use to decon them with? But anyways, I'm responsible for doing this. So I go ahead and I put all the instruments in water and then I just leave them there to soak with the I'm going to find the name of this liquid that I'm trying to tell you guys about. The soap. Whatever the soap is called. I pour that in there. 
this blue thing is what I put in there and again you want to follow the instructions of how much to use I think for mines it's like a gallon of water per like two ounce or one ounce or something like that so I put that in there and then I just leave them and let them soak and then I'm while my instruments are soaking I'm going to go ahead and clean my room like I said it's one OR so it's really not a big deal and it's such a tiny OR like it's really not a big deal so I just take the sheets off wipe everything down and just restock if I need to like little things like that I'll restock the room if I need to and yeah so here's a little montage of me just cleaning the OR and I'll come back and talk to you guys after All right, so after that, I went ahead and got some lunch. I had a sandwich, um, so I didn't bring any lunch, so I had to eat out. So then after that, I go ahead and I take all of the indicators that came from the instrument pouches that I opened, so like the sterilizer indicators. I go ahead and I save them, and I and I just make a copy of the schedule, and I put them all in a book just to keep track of them to make sure that whatever instruments I use were properly sterilized and if a patient has a uh, surgical site infection then we can go back and make sure to check oh was this properly sterilized and like yeah it will be there shown that yeah the specific instrument was did pass the sterilizer tests and all that good stuff so then here I am just cleaning the instruments I go ahead and use a steel brush to it's like a steel toothbrush literally to just like that's what's recommended to clean surgical instruments so i just go ahead and i use that to scrub down all the instruments very thoroughly and then i lay them out on like a fresh towel to dry and i'll typically go ahead and just let them dry air dry on their own if i'm like behind schedule or like i need to reprocess a tray for the next case or something and i don't have time i'll just go ahead and grab another fresh green towel and just pat dry them like i'm doing here i wasn't really in, in a rush but <laughs> i wanted to go home on time so i just go ahead and i 
do this also to like pr like clean them a little bit more too like sometimes they'll have like watermarks or something on them and i like to just go through and make sure that that's not on there and like if there's any like residual water residue on them doing that with the towel also helps taking them off so i like to do that as well so that's just what i'm doing here to get all of them ready to get re-sterilized again and of course you know i'm just here watching a show while i'm doing this because you just gotta need something for the time to pass um so that's just what i'm doing here and then i'm just remaking my instrument tray so that was the tray that you guys saw me open so i'm just going ahead and putting back stuff in the tray where it belongs and then i put the other instruments that were in pouches i put those in like pouches for them to go into the sterilizer we have like instrument tray pans and then we have these little sets called basic sets and that's what we use when we do like local procedures like when we're not doing anything crazy and when we have these suture remover trays that we also put into these little pouches as well that gets used on clinical day and those are the steam sterilizer indicator strips that are going to go into every tray that I put into the sterilizer. I go ahead and I write the name of the instrument on there and then the date. And that's what one of the um, trays look like to organize it into the autoclave. So I go ahead and put that. And then here's how I wrap the instrument trays. I basically put it in a towel first. And one of the most important things about wrapping instruments is just to make sure that there's no air. Like you want to make it as tight as possible. So that's why I put a towel first to just protect, number one, protect the instrument tray. And then I go ahead and I grab one of those blue wrappers basically. And I also put an indicator on top of the towel. So there's an indicator inside the actual tray. There's an indicator on top of the towel. And then I'll put another one in there as well. But here we go. You guys learn how to do this in school, how to wrap. I was so bad at this in school and I'm, I was still really bad at it when I started this job. So it just takes a lot of practice to wrap these. Like if you're really good at wrapping like I don't know Christmas gifts or something you would probably be okay at this but I suck at wrapping Christmas gifts too so I had a hard time learning how to do this but it just takes practice um, but the biggest thing is just making sure that it is tight you don't want any air gaps in there um, so you want to have it as tight as possible even if that means you have to play around with it and you guys will see I I fight with this a lot like just to get it perfect the way how I want it so I'll open it back out and redo it a couple times just to make sure it's going to be wrapped properly and there's no gaps in there for a potential fire or something inside the autoclave so here i am doing it all over again because i just felt like it wasn't tight enough on the corners so yeah that's how i wrap my instrument trays but yeah you know um since i made the transition I, my quality of life has definitely gone up because I'm just not stressed out anymore about taking calls. I work Monday through Thursday sometimes. Sometimes I do Monday through Friday and I do like a half day during the week or something. But um, it's just not as stressful as it was working at a trauma one hospital. No call, no weekends. I'm literally just living my best life. On days that we don't do surgery, every day we do surgeries like three days out of the week on days we're not doing surgery I'm either just there you know making sure the instruments are good um, from like different days that we do surgery making sure the OR is stocked and then I'll help out with like skincare clinic that we have and if the surgeons have like a local procedure on their schedule from doing clinic I'll help out with that but it's really like not a bad gig at all the pay is great hours are amazing so I love it so here I am just putting the indicator tape on the outside of the instrument pan. Um, so you just want to make sure you tape down and sometimes you can use the tape as a way of like making sure it's all tight too as well. So if there's any gap you can use the tape. So this is the autoclave, like a standard autoclave. I'm going to go in and place my rack on the bottom. And then 
you can also go ahead and put a pack on top of that as well on its own tray so i do that and when you're doing that where you have pouches and then a pack you always always want to select packs never just pouches because obviously packs have a longer um, sterilization time that they go up to so you want to always just select packs on there and then just hit start and that was pretty much my day um like i said i've had days where it's been you know i've had 11 hour days where it was just like a long day and the surgeon was just something wasn't going right but usually it's really not too crazy but that was pretty much my day that was just one case that i had and then a lot of just like cleaning up to do and things like that but yeah that was the day in the life of a plastic surgery surgical tech so that was me just getting ready to go home this was also a different day as you guys can tell i'm wearing black scrubs that day but it was basically just i just wanted to show you guys me leaving because i didn't close out the vlog from the day before hope you guys enjoyed bye